Okay, hi there. Um, I'm here to show how to build Bill Church's awesome new design for our Lego kit. Um, this is the new kind of base system. Here's the Lego motor, here's the wheel. Now, what we've changed, actually a couple of changes. So first things first, now we don't have any kind of base plate or anything. We just put some holes in the sidewall of our OXO, feed through some, what are these things called, zip ties. Zip tie, zip tie. And now these zip ties go into the zip ties on here. I never remember which way, if they're down or up. That's it, so they're down. Boom. Um, and you just zip tie it into place. Boom. Boom. And now we get to see, does it have good contact? By turning this leg on top. Yeah, that's pretty good contact. Woohoo! So that's good. Now, next thing we'll do, we'll plug this in. You see it isn't attached to a battery, because, get used to it, build church. 3D printed an adapter so that we can attach the Lego motor into this adapter. Nice and well attached there. And now we can attach the leads on the end of the adapter to some external power supply. And if I turn that on, if I now turn on said power supply, power supply, is it done? Right. It's got zero volts coming out. That's not very useful. I don't remember how to use this power supply. Come on, power supply. Yeah, there we go. So, funny power supply, nice power. A little hard to use, but awesome. And so then we can change the rotation rate from really fast all the way to really slow. It's actually much broader range than when you get out of Lego itself. All right, so I'm gonna turn that off. Next thing, okay, told you you'd get used to this. Bill Church found a $30 cast acrylic uh, cake stand. Now the question is, is this the way for yeah, if so, Bill Church has changed our world by finding the cake. Mm. Oh, it's pretty nice. Wow. Oh. And it fits our OXO nearly perfectly. So that's amazing. $30 with shipping. When we build our own, these are about 200 bucks each. So, great. It's a little floaty in here. It's a little smaller. This is, I think, 14.2 or 3 inches, and this is 14. So I took some Lego dots, put one there, put one there, put one there. Oh, nice. It's in there. Let's see if this still works. Oh, we've got a rotating tank. We've got a small planet. Okay. Now we're going to put some water in here. I'm not going to spill any. Awesome. And we can see we don't have any problems spinning the water. So we'll leave this here. I don't even need it to go that fast. Where am I at? Oh, I'm at like 9 volts. That's like 10 RPM-ish. Great. We'll do 10 RPM. We're going to take a little break in this movie. Let this tank spin up. And when it's finished spinning up and all the fluid is moving together, we'll do a quick experiment to show you that the current version of our Lego system works fabulously. All right, break, 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 time. break time. So now we've had this tank rotating for about five minutes, maybe a little longer, but I don't think much. And the fluid should have all spun up. A little shaky free surface today. I'm not sure why I probably didn't get the tension right on those. But now we'll spray in some dye. And if we want, we can ooh, pull the dye apart with some Factor. And now we'll get some 
Very nice. Now we'll get some fronts in the die, and those fronts will then go unstable, and we should start to get downwelling convection, rotating convection modes in those spots. Like if you want, come on in. You can see right here, already we're starting to get these cool spiraling, compositionally dense regions. So there was dye in the surface layer. It's dense, it wants to sink, and so we get this beautiful array of tornadoes. I pulled it apart so it's all at the rim with the soap, and I can spray a little more in the center, and it'll go unstable as well too. Possibly a little nauseating for people in non-rotating space. <laughs> but maybe you can see that we get these fabulous structures that look very different than what you get in non-rotating fluid dynamics. So we can immediately start teaching people the joys of little hurricanes and little tornadoes and little swirly things, given some Legos, a power supply, and this fabulous new tank that's purchasable on Amazon. Those are about as good as I've ever seen them, actually. Look at those, those are incredible. CBT, wow, those are fabulous. Good to go? And actually, it's really interesting. Actually, I don't understand this. We have a different density of, so these are, this is called a vortex crystal. Uh, this spacing out here is different than the spacing in there. And it's only supposed to depend on the viscosity. I wonder if the soap changes the effective viscosity. You know what I mean? Well, I never would have guessed that would occur. So great. I don't know why that happened actually. So that might be one answer, but I would not have predicted that. Beautiful. So again, here's our beautiful crystal. Let's try to mix it. Slowly gonna mix it. And we should quote unquote ruin it. And yet the beauty of rotating fluids is that all the fluid motions tend to align with the rotation axis, with the axis coming out of this uh, rotating frame along the angular velocity vector. And we just, when we put in turbulence, when we add in more energy into the flow, we get large vortices that also are really well aligned with the rotation axis. And this amazing organization is one of the best parts of rotating fluid dynamics. So oh, I did some really good experiments on my DIY dynamics tank. Oh, I have a whole new appreciation of climate, atmospheres, oceans, really how rotating fluid dynamics works in our universe. Wow. Okay. That worked.